We'll call the Surrey County Administration Committee meeting to order for April 11, 2024. Madam Clerk, may we have roll call? Tweed Schumann. Here. Ron Buckholtz. Present. Tom Duffy. Ron Kinsley. Dale Schleter is excused. Thank you. Let the record indicate we have a quorum. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Madam Clerk, certification of compliance with open meetings law, please. This meeting has been noticed to the public and news media as required by Section 19.84 of the Wisconsin Statutes. Thank you. Meeting agenda has been presented. Number six, public comment. I think everybody knows the rules here. I have one comment letter, Ms. Linda Zelmer. State your name and address, ma'am. Good morning, Linda Zilmer, resident of the Village of Birchwood, Edgewater property tax, uh, property owner, property taxpayer. Um, in addition to my public comment, I was going to ask if possibly during the veterans um, service department report if um if gary has knowledge of assembly bill 102 which proposes to reduce from 100 percent to 70 percent the eligibility for property tax credits for veterans um or 70 percent disability for uh, veterans uh if there's an explanation about that bill and then also what would make up the funding for the the property tax credit to the say the county or underlying taxing jurisdictions. And then my public comment this morning has to do with um, the start of the new two-year term coming up in next week's organizational committee meeting. Washburn County has uh, specifically chosen uh, to not go the administrator route. And that county board, those members are all well informed in their departments of jurisdiction. So next coming Tuesday, they will have an all day organizational meeting where each department head comes up, introduces themselves and explains what their department does to the full county board. Committee assignments are made. And then also Washburn County has a week long budget process where um, the committees work with the department heads and develop their departmental budgets. And they also get a full presentation of the annual audit, which that has been dropped for the last two years. So I really don't understand how as a Sawyer County board member, board members fully understand what their departments are responsible for, whether the county is actually providing the mandated services or where there are gaps. And also there's no connection between the budget process or the audit report for Sawyer County supervisors. And then um, separately, once the committees are formed, I will be bringing forward a request for action or a complaint with regard to oversight of the zoning department. And this goes back to ongoing problems for many years and which came to a head in 2023 with bringing uh, matters to the attention of the administrator, to the committee chair, and then to you, Mr. Chairman that um, did that continue and go unaddressed and which really resulted to with um, the ethics complaint that I filed. So the problems are ongoing, legal fees increase. And if you just look at that zoning ordinance amendment process, it, it uh, I disagree with Mr. Kurtzweil. It's get, the drafts are getting worse, not better. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else for public comment? Lynn, anyone online? Okay, thank you. Moving on then to number seven, consider approval of our meeting minutes March 14th, 2024. Has everyone had a chance to review them? Yes. Any edits, corrections, Mr. Buckle? Make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Mr. Duffy. Seconded. Motion by Mr. Buckhold, second by Mr. Duffy to approve our meeting minutes of March 14th, 2024 as presented. Is there any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed? Motion carries, thank you. That's kudos to you, Madam Clerk. All right, number eight, Waldo Center update, discussion, possible action. Mr. Alvarado. Um, I just have a few things to uh, follow up on, and then I guess I'm looking for some direction from the committee. So after last month's meeting, I did meet with 
uh, Lori from the Waldo Center after she made the presentation to the committee. Um, just went through a couple things as far as verifying the request of funds. Um, you know, they had requested my, uh, fund or support during our budget process uh, last fall. Um, she indicated that the request was you know, essentially the same. Their activities were the same. The amount is less because they anticipated getting the grant funding to uh, replace some of the money they had requested in the fall. I did forward it to the committee then. And I, I think, you know, I'm not going to rehash their plans, but I did forward to the committee the attorney's opinion or summary we received last fall, just so you're aware of that. Like we have talked about, you know, counties are uh, able to do the things that are authorized by statute. And so, um, you know, the things that they've indicated they're doing with the Waldo Center, um, for the most part, they're not things that the county would generally fund an outside agency to do. And some of them are eligible if the county was performing the service. Um, with the exception of um, the support for aging and, and uh, senior services, the county does have the authority to appropriate funds directly for that or um, the, for the county to perform the work or a private agency to perform such work. So that would be the area that if you were looking to support the, their uh, Waldo Center, that would be the um, area I would encourage you to focus in on. What area is that again? Um, aging and disability senior sir senior aging and senior services. aging and senior yeah. service like specifically they've talked about doing senior programming and senior meals okay is that what we contribute right now to the hayward center to well we contribute and that's what i was going to follow up with oh, so sorry. i know when i we've talked about this i've mentioned the senior resource center um so that is something that we do support uh currently we, we have an annual appropriation to the senior resource center largely uh, built off of their budget, their request for funds for the senior meal program that they do congregate sites and home delivered meals. Um, and that's where I, I guess I want to not, not pit the two against each other, so to speak, but that's something I would caution is that we know already uh, based on our conversations with senior resource. Um, and they haven't said this, this is our, I, quite frankly, mine and the finance director's interpretation is that they are, they are struggling as well. Um, Lynn's a board member, she can vouch for some of this. They're having a hard time staffing it. Um, the cost of their meals are higher. It's it's a struggle to get reimbursements timely through the state because of the, you know, they don't have the financial means to advance the funds and wait for the reimbursements to come through. So we've had to uh, help us uh, float some of those uh, last year. And I guess I'm just concerned. My cautionary advice would be not to fund two entities that are going to struggle. You know, if, if we want to see uh, more improved services in the winter area, your best option might be to, you know, we, we give senior resource money now or a, appropriation to direct them to do more there as a contingency of us funding them or increase their funding. And that's in part yeah. because they are a regulated agency. And I've clarified this at the human services meeting this week is that we don't, we don't contract, we don't have a contract with senior resource. We provide them a annual appropriation to uh, allow them to operate a full meal program that's uh, operating. They're not required to through their state contract. Uh, the minimum they have to do is two meals, two hot meals a week. Um, they do they do more than that, and that's largely why the county provides funding to them. Um, so they get me go back to we don't have a contract. We have an MOU. Um, they have a contract with the state, though Senior Resource does through through GUAR, which is the Greater Wisconsin Aging um, Program. So that GUAR gets state in front of money that they funnel out to the aging program still at the state. Sura County, I think is one of, it's less than 10, I wanna say it's six or seven counties that have a nonprofit agency delivering that service to the county residents, not a county agency. That decision was made years ago by the county. The county had to opt out of doing it so in that case, the state contracts with an agency to deliver those services. And it's the meal program is the, uh, the most uh, visible, but they also do other programming and dementia care and caregiving uh, sessions as well. So that's um, how senior resource operates. And is our current nonprofit, are they funded by the state as well? They are. Okay. And how much does senior, the senior resources? Right, private. right. How much does the county contribute to their annual budget i should have looked at, i want to say it's 150 ish thousand but i can okay, okay. And, 
And do you feel that their struggle is because of a, a money shortfall? I think it's a couple of things. It's a money shortfall and a staffing issue. I mean, that's where the, they just can't get yeah. enough staff. They they don't have a. It's tied to get a livable wage or there. Yes, I think they they're, they have limited funds available to them to deliver the service. So they you know the drivers essentially are volunteers to deliver the home delivered meals. They get paid mileage. They're trying to hire a cook in Stone Lake, and I think what they can pay probably isn't competitive that'd be an indication of why they haven't filled it mm-hmm. might have been the case in winter that was one of the reasons they ended up closing the winter facility was inability to retain staff there as well but it's also you know and i and i think i've shared that we've reached out to senior research we're trying to be proactive because if they fail that's probably going to come back to us at some level um, and i think for the most part the public even sees senior resource in the county as probably tied together like yeah when they when they closed the winter center i think the county took some of the blame as did senior resource because i think people expect the county to make sure that service is available who um, closed the winter center us or well, senior resource senior center? resource did they made that decision mr buckles i gotta let it go uh, yeah um i sat on that uh senior resource board for quite a while with lynn and all them <laughs> and i know back then it, it was hard they were short people getting people to work because they couldn't give them the wage that the people wanted but i'm wondering now with what's going on with that waldo down there and they have the people this might not be the right time now because everything's slow but uh the senior resource center picking that center back up i mean that's something to look at i mean they got people there now that's uh they're they're there they're, they care about it. They're working it. I mean, they got lots going on right now. So I guess uh, if down the road, if they could get picked back up, it might be something to look at. So, Lynn, can you comment more on that? I can on a couple of things. On that note, um, I think one of the reasons that I, they can certainly look at it again, I have no doubt about it. But one of the difficulties was that Waldo does not want to usually conform to what the GWAR requirements are. At one point, they wanted to do whatever meal plan they, what the people were asking for, not what the nutritionist was required to provide. So there was some considerations there as well, I think, is why some of the staff left. But that could certainly be looked at. But another reason they have a shortfall is that GWAR has changed, recently changed the way they can turn in payment for our Meals on Wheels drivers. They used to be able to turn in time and mileage. Guar will now only let them turn in mileage. So there's another $34,000 out the door this year that we were not expecting. So it's things like that. Plus the meal costs of meals have gone up almost double. So between that staffing and the the amount of funds that are being taken away from the Senior Resource Center, it, it is in a very difficult position. So, Lynn, Guar used to pay um, their hourly wage and mileage. Right. And now they cut out the hourly wage. Exactly. For the senior resource center as well? For the research, yeah, for the senior resource center. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. And does anyone know if they were awarded that grant? Do you, Mr. Sorolski? I think it was the Enbridge grant that they had requested. Yes, and, and Enbridge did come up with 5000 which we may well be able to receive in June. In June. Andy. Yeah, I guess I was probably wrap up where I was just so I think it's you know if we're gonna look at funding Waldo or um, senior resource like has been mentioned it is regulated and I don't I have again another caution would be we know with senior resource they're overseen by Guar they have a contract with Guar there's requirements of the meal program as far as the dietary restrictions they have to have a dietitian review their menus to make sure they're providing appropriate meals to the, the senior residents. Um, they also have to go through training as far as food safety and those things. When I met with Lori, that's one of the follow-ups we did have is I connected Lori for Waldo with our public health department, understanding that they were looking at outfitting the building with a kitchen and bring meals. I, I didn't want them to spend money in, on residential appliances if they needed commercial appliances and if they need to have a commercial kitchen license because they are preparing meals for the public. And I know there was 
going to be a meeting. I don't know if they actually have met yet, but yeah, I know Brian Becker from public health did tell me that he had had contact with Lori and they were going to get together and sort that out. But that's, if, if you were thinking of, of providing uh, funds to Waldo for that purpose, I think we'd want to check some boxes off to make sure that those things are happening. I think sustainability is an issue. And I talked to Lori about, you know, okay, they're getting a grant. The county provides some funds. How are you, you know, she, she said it was one, just this money to get started. Okay. How are you going to sustain this going down the road? Yeah. I think you'd want to have some assurances that mm -hmm. they have a plan. I know she, I mean, I think they are fired up right now and they have volunteers and they're getting donations. I don't necessarily know that that's going right. to perpetuate itself. Um, and if they're going to rely on income for meals, one that goes back to having a commercial kitchen, if they're going to make money. They probably need commercial, some commercial licensing, but I think they'll run into the same issue that senior resources run into with the escalating cost of meals. Um, but yeah, like I said, we are supposed to be having a meeting with senior resource coming up with the board and the staff there. And one of the things we're putting on the table with them is, you know, sustainability, like yeah. most counties at this point have consolidated the operations into a central kitchen that disperses the meals or at least reduces the number of kitchens. Cause right now they're operating facilities with kitchens and cooks in excellent stone Lake and here. Right. And you know, would it make sense to your point, maybe Hayward and winter, are the most logical locations for kitchens, you know, at opposite ends and then you fill in around them. But we, we're trying to be proactive with them and help them get to some solutions so that it's mutually beneficial. Lynn, does um, Senior Resource Center have rapport with Waldo? I mean, do you guys talk? Have, I know Andy's talked to Lori and maybe John down I don't there. I know but that it's you, been recent, recently yeah. in the past, but I'm not so sure about recently. The, the only report I know of is that as far as the home delivered meals, like mm -hmm. Senior Resource is serving the winter area with yeah. home delivered meals. And if the resident, five days a week or two? Um, depends on the, it's supposed to be five. I don't know the schedule, but I do know that people can request frozen meals as yep. well as hot. So yep. if they miss one day, they can have one delivered at the same time for their freezer. So whatever they need should be available through that process. And, and they've offered to deliver, if there's a group mm -hmm. and they want to meet at Waldo to get their meals and have the meals there. Senior Resource will deliver the meals to the Waldo Center. Whether their people are taking advantage of that, I don't know. John, how many people down at Waldo Center would request a meal if it were there? Do you have that number? I do not. Uh, I'm afraid I'm, I, I'm sorry to say I don't have uh, any, hardly any of that. Um, I could find out as well as she would be, she would for sure be able to tell me. Yeah, Mr. Buckles? Yeah, I mean, I, we need to, and with all this shortfall going on with money for our, Senior Resource Center, whether it's Waldo, uh, Stone Lake Hayward, we we our seniors need this. It's a very very important to them, and there's a lot. I know there's a lot of seniors out there that that can't afford these meals, but they need them, and I I, I do not like to see it not happen for them. So. And that's point on because the number of meals just keeps increasing. Yes. It's not going the other direction. Could you, yeah, but bear with you, Stace. Can you look up, what is that number, Andy, that we, and I don't need it right now, but I think Mr. Kinsley of Finance could look at that at a meeting or two coming up. I know we we did do a budget amendment, you know, increasing for our deputies to take their vehicles outside the town. And I understand that, but is there is there more money in finance to assist our senior resource center to, better cover the Waldo area. At the same time, can you look up how many meals are serving at Hayward and at Excellent? Yeah. Yeah, all that, that report's available each yeah. month, so I can... I We'd like all it. that. Yeah, Miss Hessel. So I, I think the point being is that our seniors are being served, but I, the Waldo Center has, the way that she described it as a community center and not just for the elderly. So I think you want to be careful because you're going to have every township develop a community center and ask us for funding then. So you're, you're, you're opening that uh, can of worms to not only service the seniors, but to serve each township. So 
I just want you to. Well, I would disagree that they're being served because we attended a meeting down there and I still talk to people there that are not served. So is there any other, Mr. Duffy, do you have any other comments? Mr. Duffy, do you have any comments on this, sir? Can you turn your mic on, sir? The cold meals. Why? Why aren't the Why aren't the meals hot? I mean, what What's going on? I just, so why do we need more facts? I don't. The, there's, a, there's a problem. The, some Some most go out hot, but if they know there's going to be like a holiday, or maybe the, there's no driver for Friday, they'll send a cold meal along that they can microwave. Um, can you turn your mic on, Mr. Kinsley, so we can hear you? I'm sure they can hear me. Yeah, they can. <laughs> yeah, but not online. I don't know who's online. Do they still serve meals at Stone Lake? I don't know. Yes, they yes, they do. And and part of the problem with the the temperature, they do put them in heat controlled bags, um, but the delivery distance is quite a ways. And they're with a lack of drivers. Those routes can sometimes be two hours just to deliver one set of meals. Yeah. The Hayward set route is just humongous. Well, maybe we're going to start using that Hayward bus to deliver now. now. And that was one con consideration that Andy talked about is a different kind of van that actually has facilities to keep meals warm is one yeah. to investigate. Because we have a military man here, and I'm sure that they can keep meals warm. <laughs> Mr. Bu Mr. Buckle. There, the areas that have gone to centralized kitchens are reduced. They've invested into systems that, like a tray that's sealed while it's hot, and then it goes into another unit that keeps it warm until it gets to its point. The county allocation to senior resource in 24 was 130,111. 23 was 120,111. 22 was 105. 21 was 101. That number does also include their uh, transportation aids that run through the county. So, Who does senior resource center? What committee do they report to? Human services. That's where they're. Should, I, we should have them come in with all their numbers. And, yeah, we, they've and been Lynn, committed to. If human. we can keep this on the admin agenda next month, and we'll ask our finance people if they'll address it. Because I think it's worthy of further. Discussion. It is. It is. And I know, but it hasn't been lately. I used to get calls in my district that the meals from Exland when coming to winter to the people were cold when they got there. And I believe my understanding was that I know they were working on this to make that better. And I'm not sure if that's happened yet or not, but I know it was in the works. So, Maybe lend the option of Stone Lake. Do they cook there too? Yes, they do. And on the consolidated kitchen, all of us think that's a great idea. The problem right now is that none of the kitchens are big enough to handle that. So there would have to be some substantial remodeling. But that's a great idea. We like it. Okay. Is there any further discussion on our Waldo set? Other than we're going to continue it. Everybody okay with that? All right, thank you. Thank you, Andy, for that information. And Mr. Sorolski, thank you. All right, moving on to number nine then, Veterans Service Department report. Gary? All right, good morning. So for the month of March, we had 407 phone calls, 461 letters, emails, and faxes, and 199 uh, office visits. Uh, to, to date, uh, we had 51 disability claims and with uh, $62,641.54 uh, in claims that were decided, uh, initial payout, I should say, for claims that were uh, decided in the veterans' favor. Uh, Nicole and I go to training next week. We will be out for the week uh, down in Green Bay to get uh, some state training done. It's a mandatory requirement that we get our training done every year. We've got so, so many uh, training units or uh, credit units that we're supposed to get every year to maintain our accreditation. Um, outreach, the I was asked to by the American Legion Post 218, uh, they're doing a fundraiser for uh, uh, improving the Greenwood, the veteran section of the Greenwood uh, Cemetery. So they asked if I'd come out and speak uh, to a mixed audience of 
I think the, the youngest were probably eight or nine years old that were that were helping raise funds all the way up to uh, those in their 70s, maybe 80s. So it was uh, interesting on on uh, how to how to talk to everybody and get the message through. Um, so I did that, and then we had uh, was requested uh, the DAV uh, Chapter 52. Uh, that that uh, organization was mainly based out of Barron, but it covered our area. Um, so they got out, and now they're what they're going to do is they're doing meetings every month in a different county that they're supporting. So and there's five, I want to say five counties, but they asked uh, asked me to go down uh, and talk to them down at Spooner, and I, I did so on Tuesday of this week. So I went down and talked to them about uh, veterans benefits and some of the challenges that we're seeing up here in uh, Northern Wisconsin. So uh, let's see. And then uh, I've got the VFW District 10 asked me to come talk to them Saturday morning, uh, this, this coming Saturday morning at the Hayward Community Credit Union, or Hayward, Hayward, good gosh. Okay. Yes, thank you. The Hayward Hayward Veterans Community Center. So, uh, so I'm going to go talk to them again uh, on uh, what's going on. Uh, not so much on the national level, but again, bringing it back to the state side. What's important here? There, everybody can read the the various magazines for these organizations on a national level, and that's pretty clear cut. But so, uh, as far as our office goes, we we're we continue to be very busy. I, I looking at the numbers. We had uh, over 60 claims already since I wrote this report. So it's, we're maintaining uh, a constant uh, through fare in the office and phone calls. Um, lots of challenges. The, the biggest thing I've been seeing recently is the federal VA went to AI to help uh, part through their their paperwork and claims and and it's generating a lot of mistakes so they're they're going to continue to fine-tune that AI model until they hopefully get it right but it causes a lot of uh, problems as far as claims because when I set up, submit a claim claims aren't yeah and that's another thing uh, <clears throat> some people come in and say I've got this and I want to claim it but just because you, they think they have it doesn't mean that you can claim it. You have there's 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 medical evidence, uh, sometimes legal evidence that you got to go through to to figure out what is justifiable, uh, something that would be a successful claim with the VA, and you have to figure that out. It's not when somebody comes in and says, "I want to claim my big toe," it, it it isn't just I write big toe down and I submit it in. It's it's me doing research many times, many 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 times. Uh, and through medical literature to figure out what exactly is wrong with that big toe and then legally can you file it. So it, it's not, I guess when I say I'm filing claims, it isn't just simply writing stuff down and sending it in. There is a lot of work behind it. Um, and then, so, and the other thing uh, with the the feds too, because of uh, all, all the, uh, op you know, they opened up all the different types of, uh, disabilities due to service, uh, they had to do hiring, significant hiring. And, and I'm dealing with a lot of that too. I will, I will submit a perfect claim to the VA and somebody that's brand new will mess it up. And that generate, then it comes back to me and it generates more paperwork going, no, you're wrong. Here's why, you know, and use their own words against them and their own, you know, citations and go, yeah, on, on the, the first paragraph, it does say this, but on the third paragraph, it also says this, and therefore I'm right and you're wrong. That's, that's kind of what it comes down to. Um, so we've got a lot of new people going in. It's generating even more, more work back to the office and frustration you know, for the veterans, but we seem to be working through it slowly. Um, and then uh, this week I got hit up to, I, uh, Cole, uh, Nicole called one of our drivers and they said, you know what, I, I've got a medical issue. I, I'm no longer able to drive. I was going to call you. And that was followed up 
by the following phone call to the other driver going, can you cover? And he's like, well, um, I just sold my house. I'm moving. So I'm out of drivers right now. And uh, so I, when Rose, I sent Rose uh, an email, but I see she's out till the 15th when she gets back. I guess we're going to have to get on it pretty hot and heavy to see if I can find some drivers that can pass a drug test and uh, a background test and a good driving record uh, to be able to continue to move our veterans down to their specialty care uh, medical, medical appointments in Minneapolis. So... What are the drivers okay. getting paid in all? It's pretty low. It's pretty low. Pretty low. It's $14 and some odd cents. I think it's like fourteen eighty one. And so, and, and the hard part is, it's like, yeah, I, I don't mind driving. But then you tell them that the show time is 4.30 in the morning here. And that means a 3.30, you know, a, probably a 3.30 uh, 3 uh, get up or to, to, to get to work to pick up the veterans and then hopefully they show up. And we've had that happen too, where veterans failed to show up for their van ride. And the vet, and the, so the driver goes back home. Um, so that's the hard part. The, the hard part is actually, I think the 3 a.m. or the 3.30 a.m. get up for, the, for, for people young and old. I've got some people that, you know, it's like Gary, I get five hours of sleep. I'm up at three o'clock in the morning, I'm ready to go. Um, and uh, and the and I, I'm I'm serious about the drug testing too. I, I talked yeah. to some people. And it's like Gary, um, I'd love to, but I I I, I can't. Who sets that rate? Yeah, that's what I was going. What's that? Like Who sets the pay rate? Will County hmm. sets the pay rate. Yeah, county. Yeah, yeah. It's the county pays this. Is I I file a grant every year for reimbursement for the work that we've done. So, you know, the, yeah, obviously the pay would, an increase in pay would help, you know, but so you've got that and you've got the, the get up time. Did you, do you put in your annual budget, Gary, an increase for those drivers? Have you put that in there and we denied it or? No. Because I don't think we ever would. No, you've never denied. You know, we, we bumped it up. Um, okay. We bumped it up about two years ago. It was twelve dollars, and it got bumped up to fourteen eighty eight. You know, so and it was like, what is that? What is uh, an equivalent pay for somebody that does this job within the county? How many other drivers does the county have? None. None. Right. Right. So, so we're it, contracting it out. Yeah. Like so the sheriff's department. And I I talk. You know. It, and this is one of the things about being a, a, a county in the northern part of the state of Wisconsin is below, is it 29 that cuts the state in half? 29 and below, uh, the state contracts with DAV um, to, do, to do driving, and they, and they provide funds for that. And the, the, if a veteran has a, an appointment at a medical facility, not just at the main center, but at a clinic, Mm -hmm. They can call DAV, get on the schedule. DAV shows up at their doorstep, picks them up, takes them to their appointment, and then drives them home. That's that, you know, and they're not the, obviously they're not the only one on there, but, but it's all, you know, kind of, I think it's branched off today. We've got this, this, this pickup and go. Up here, for the northern counties, we have to apply for a transportation grant, which I do every year. And again, it's based off performance of what we did. The prior year um but gary sells the 29 then you're saying is contracted contracted they fund it all at 100 percent. correct yeah this the counties are not paying a dime for that transportation the state and dav is up here if we want the money or some money some reimbursement it's not a hundred percent we apply for a grant um, I had the secretary of Wisconsin Department of Veteran Affairs. I talked to him two weeks ago. He stopped in at the office and I, and I had about an hour with him. And I said, and that and transportation come up. And I said, you know what? I would gladly, gladly turn in the vans and, and not apply for a grant if, if we had the same service that the southern part of the state has. Now, other counties... 
will have programs where they've uh, co-opted with uh, other county agencies, but the counties are still on the hook for, for paying for that. You know, so where they've got um, uh, in one county, I think it's Polk, they got Health and Human Services, they're, they're co-opted with Health and Human Services, does all the transportation, the Veteran Service Office doesn't do anything but file for the grant every year for, you know, how many veterans or whatever. There. So it's, it's, it's a lot uh, more hands-free. I won't say it's touchless, but it's, it's a lot less work for that service office, but that work gets transferred to the Health and Human Services, and, and it's still getting... You know, it's still it's still a, a cost to the counties. So it, it's this whole yeah. Every, it drives me nuts to think that we've got. Um, you know, I was told that the, the the state of Wisconsin has all these funds sitting there. Yet I'm I, I I'm a chairman of the township that I live in, and we got a letter going. Your your property taxes need to be bumped up and if you don't do it within you know by 2026 we're going to send somebody up there to help you increase your taxes yet we're sitting on a whole bunch of money at the state and yet the northern part of the state is struggling coming up with senior center and taking care of our seniors you know struggling with all this other stuff and yet they're sitting on this money it, you know to me quit raising the the taxes and get that money back out to, to where you took it from so we can use it where we need it. But just my opinion. Yep. And I mentioned that to Andy regarding our upcoming resolutions we can present to the Wisconsin counties association. That is a golden one. Yeah. That they include the entire state in those DVA transports. So, you know, other, you know, so, and every county is different on what they do and how they're set up. It's just, you know, it's like where they're based. Every county north of 29 is different. Yes. Yeah. And how they do, do yeah. with their transportation. Absolutely. Every one. Mr. Kinsley. Learning so much information, I don't know where to start. Yeah. Um, when a person, when a veteran files a complaint for a claim, how long does it take if they're going to get the claim to get? Is that something you can answer? Because I would imagine it. Some might be months and some might be years. So yeah. when someone files a claim with you, how long before they receive money? Okay. So on an initial claim, on an initial claim, it it, it varies. It it varies for multiple reasons. And and so how do I work this? So there's a national work queue is what the VA. It used to be when I first started. Any claim in the state of Wisconsin went to the VA regional office in Milwaukee, and Milwaukee worked that claim. Despite whatever it was, Milwaukee did the work for the Wisconsin residents. Milwaukee done such a great, great job, and there's other states that were doing poor jobs where, you know, Milwaukee was getting their claims out within, I'll, I'll pull it out of my my dear year, but you know, four months, it was turned around. They had a decision, whether it was good, bad, there was a decision in four months. Other states were taking years to have a decision, maybe the same thing. So the VA goes, we've got a problem here. So we're gonna do a uh, work share and they call it the national work queue. So every day, uh, I think two, three, actually three times a day, the VA, somebody, magical office, over, overlooking all these claims and the numbers and the days uh, the claims have taken, go out and, and they go out and they look at the regional offices in every state and they go, okay, Milwaukee only has 50 claims when we give them 300 this morning. So we're going to give them another 250 claims to bring them back up to 300 and balance the workload nationally, right? So this is where you do a good job, you get more work, but that's the way it works. And, and uh, so I will, I will file a claim. It'll go down to, it goes through Janesville, which is a center and it just, Janesville disperses it out to, uh, to whomever, whatever regional office needs work. So it might go to Phoenix, Arizona for a hearing claim. And somebody in Phoenix, Arizona sits down there, pulls the veterans, medical records, military records, current rec medical records, and compares everything and says, yay, verily, that person did have some hearing loss. 
that met that appears to have met VA purposes for hearing loss. And they call a contractor, one of three up here uh, that covers this area. And that's based off who has less less work to do. And they give it to that to that agency. And that agency finds the 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 type of medical person that would that you're filing for. In this case, if it's hearing, it's an audiologist that's been trained by the VA to do a comp and pen exam. And that and they they contact them, find out what days they have open. And the contractor calls the veteran and says, okay, on this date, you go for your hand claim. The veteran hopefully makes their day. If they don't, that's more paperwork for Gary to put back in and it starts all over again. Um, so they go up, they do their audiology appointment. And then, in a, and then in about a week, I can usually see the audiologist report populate within the VA database. I can see what they said. I got a kind of an idea where this is going, whether it's up or down. Fine. Then I'm waiting for somebody in the federal government, the VA, to go, you know, yay, verily, you've got hearing loss and it's at this level and there. Therefore, here's where you are with your claim. And so the hearing claims can go, I mean, really in six months, four, four to six months, I expect to see a hearing claim back. I've had other things where it's like, this is a grand slam. This is easy, no brainer. And I've sent the stuff in and it's just sit there and, it's, and, and percolates and percolates and percolates. Now, remember when I said that the Milwaukee VA Regional Office, you asked a hell of a question too, by the way, but the Milwaukee VA Regional Office used to do everything. It didn't matter what they did, what they were claiming, whatever, the Milwaukee did it. Now, because we have Blue Water Navy, we have one regional office within the continental United States that works all Blue Water Navy claims. Camp Lejeune, we have one VA office within the, the whole United States that does any kind of Camp Lejeune claim. And the same thing, um, so yeah, so th we'll just stay with those two right there. If I file a claim, let's say um, it happens to be, pick a subject, uh, okay, uh, v Vietnam veteran prostate cancer. And it wasn't just prostate cancer, that guy had type two diabetes which is also a presumptive for Asian orange. Um, and uh, let's see, hearing loss and maybe a broken arm, right? That never quite healed. So it's gotta go, you know, if it was a blue water Navy Vietnam guy, it's gotta go to this one regional office. So they take that part and they start going, okay, was he really on this ship? Was he really here at this time? And they confirm all that. You know, to you know, to what it is, and then it comes back and says, "Yay, verily, that one was done." So then it can go anywhere else. That goes to another. Then it gets farmed out to any other regional office to go. Okay, so the presumptive is concerned. He was exposed to Agent Orange. Now, is the is the diabetes or the prostate cancer due to their really? their exposure to Agent Orange? And it goes to a different one. But we also got the hearing loss and the broken arm to deal with, and that can be anybody. So. This, this one claim, instead of getting parsed out to go in six different places at the same time, going, yay, verily, yay, verily, no, no, you know, yay, verily, and sending it back, it goes to one, then it goes to the other, and it goes on. And that was just one item. But they do that so that they don't have to deal with it the best they can, and perhaps that veteran will pass away before he ever gets to me. Emotionally, it feels that way. But, but what the VA will tell you is what they've done is they've taken their experience and they spe the specialization, you know, as far as the Camp Lejeune or the Blue Water Navy or whatever, and they, they did it there. So they're, therefore, you have an expert. It's kind of like people coming in to me and asking me, you know, I, I go from playing, you know, a tennis to rugby, you know, depending on what veteran walks in the next minute. And I'm trying to realign going, what am I doing? So these people that are specialized for these specific things, um, that's all they do. They don't, they're not a generalist. They're, you know, like I am, I am, I, you know, they're a specialist to go yes, no. And then it's up to me to, you know, when it comes back out to see if it's right or not right. So anyway. Hey, thanks, so Gary. Andy's yeah. got a well, question for you right now. Or you want one? I got one. One, 
Andy, go ahead. Just what, what was your question? Um, well, comment. So the back to the driver issue. I guess I wasn't aware. It does make sense though, because I think one of your drivers, one that's sold his house and moving, also does our summer help at the airport. Yeah, John. Yeah, so it's like a double hit for yeah. Them. So I didn't wasn't aware yeah, of that till just this meeting. So I wasn't aware that John's moving. Yeah. But so just additional information. So and correct me if I'm wrong, but on average, it looks like um, these drivers are putting in you know thirty to fifty hours a, a, a total a month. Not I mean, not 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 currently. But uh, and, and I'll tell you I'll tell you why because when when we had community care they were farming out to where people could go if it was you know over so much mileage or time to get to a doctor that you could go locally and that was funded fully funded this year they cut the funding I got I was notified by the VA medical provider here in Hayward going Gary just a heads up community care funding is going away. So when that so it's kind of like the grant money for for the transportation when community care come in our transportation went down so i file off what we did in the past now with community care going away because it's no longer being funded as much as it was our our, our driving is going to start going up okay. again so right now the numbers look poor but based on what they're telling us because of that funding it's going to go back up and I, I, it's some of those things that in our area in Edmond we've talked about because they're, I think, on the capital improvement list coming up as a replacement of a van. So Gary has two vans yep. that the county has funded that kind of assigned to him that these drivers use. But the, I, honestly, the like you said, the usage has been relatively low. low. Yep. Um, and there's not many miles on them. So we've talked about, and because we've had drivers, it has not been a top of the list priority. We've talked about uh, other alternatives because we have kind of investment in assets that's not being used. So to the question about, and Gary's pointing out that other counties, every county does do it differently. Yes. I know some counties, they pay somebody a wage and an hour uh, reimbursement and they're like, they take their own personal cars and transport veterans to Minneapolis. I think some counties do have an arrangement with transit. So transit has drivers and assets. You can just contract and pay transit those transportation costs. So there are other ways to do this. I think given that you're out of drivers, we'll, we'll post the job immediately so we can try to replace it, but there are, are other avenues we can look at to providing transportation. Okay, great. Thanks, Andy. Gary, you had one more point, yep, sir. Yep, I was asked about the property tax credit. So, <clears throat> and you had the number of the bill. I, I don't, 101 something. 102. 102. The uh, but uh, Mr. Edming, our, our representative for the for at the state, he's he's tried to do this several times, and I want to say it, it become it, it was really elevated maybe uh, six years ago, where he kept trying to push this into the to the House and Senate to get approval, but right now uh, under the state rules on a veterans that are service connected uh, at one hundred percent. They're on 100% uh, uh, service-connected disability for the VA. They can apply uh, for what's called disabled veteran property tax credit. And where their house, one acre land uh, of their house, or if it's a farm, an acre and a half that holds their house, they can apply for reimbursement of those taxes. So they go to the treasurer's office, they pay their taxes, and then when they file their income taxes, they, they, uh, this addendum is attached to it to the Department of Revenue and the Department of Revenue checks off the list that was coordinated between them and the Wisconsin Department of Veteran Affairs to see if the person was eligible for reimbursement. If so, and it checks out, then the state Department of Revenue writes a check back to the veteran for that acre or acre and a half, again, depending on what the situation is, for property tax reimbursement. Mr. Edming has asked, you know, has, has tried to get this change where to reduce it down to 70%. So, so if it was 70%, you get 70% reimbursement for the property tax credit, 80% mm. so on, all the way up to 100. 
Um, that went to the House. It made it through the House. It didn't make it to the Senate, and it fell short, right? So now, you know, it's kind of like going back, going back through the front door again. If the, if, if that's going to get moved forward, it's it's got to it's got to start the start the House again and get on and get on the on the bill and see if it, if it's important enough by the state to push it through to get reimbursement. But that's okay. kind of where we're at. And then, unfortunately, I guess Mr. Edming is. Is uh, is he retiring or or, or move? I don't know. He's not rerunning, but he's yeah. going to be our assembly manager. Yeah, they've changed the dynamics of uh, gotcha. who our representatives are. Does well, very important answer? issue. I appreciate yeah. the update. Yeah, Gary. you're welcome. Anything else for our veteran yes, service, one, Mr. Buckles? I got one question for you, Gary. What days do you need your drivers to take your veterans to? Minneapolis or wherever is right, it we, always the same or is it different? During the week? We well, we have it open to the veterans. We you know we advertise it to our veterans that Monday through Thursday we will run to Minneapolis if needed. You know, provided we have coverage. The uh, and we've had we've struggled to do it at times, but we've had our you know coverage for it where one driver would drive Monday and and then Wednesday, and the other one would do Tuesday and Thursday. Um, and then we also said, uh, no appointments before seven 30 in the morning, no appointments after one 30 in the afternoon. And it's based off the length of the day for the driver. Um, the, uh, and the, and the amount of time it takes to get down there and back. So anyway, so Monday through Thursday is when we would run. Okay, thank okay. you. Yep. And you get a week or so heads up on those appointments usually, Gary? We ask so we ask for 48 hours. Is 48 what hours. It currently what we ask is 48 hours heads up. So, yeah, so, yeah. Well, and, 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 we, and we charge, we ask for $35 to help offset the, you know, offset the cost. Yeah. The rest of that is funded by through the grant and through the county. Yeah. So. Well, I promise, Gary, that Andy and Michael look at that in the finance committee, okay? Yep. And we'd expect it to be in your 25 budget as okay. well, a bump for them. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. Thank you. All right. Gary. Thank you, Gary. I appreciate yep. all you do and your passion. It's wonderful. Okay. Moving on. Number 10, information technology department report. You know, it's Mike is online, sir. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, good morning. So we received a request from the zoning department, Jay, they're looking to streamline their permitting process, land use permits. Uh, they would like to automate that as much as possible, make it online. So we're working with uh, them on that. And uh, when that goes in, we'll look for other opportunities for other departments to streamline some some heavily uh, manual and paper-based uh, processes also. So it'll probably be a couple months out, but we'll let you know when that goes in. Other than that, uh, you see my report on the screen, and I'm available for any questions. Okay. Anyone got questions, concerns for Mike? Andy, you good? No, we appreciate it. Mike, looks Thank good. You, Thank you for Thank being you. here and providing this report, sir. Thank you. All right, moving on then to number 11, human resources report. I heard someone mention Rose is out of town. Andy, yep, for Rose is uh, on vacation this week, so I'll you. take up her report. Thank you. Um, you can see under the turnover, uh, one of the uh, paramedics there that went from full-time to part-time, that's the one I was talking, one of them I was mentioning at the, the last meeting. Um, we have uh, had a few applications that come in this week, so we're hoping to plug in some of those spots. With uh, We are short of paramedics primarily right now. Um, we do have a number of uh, eight EMTs in paramedic school. Um, so we're hoping to fill internal, but it's going to take, you know, we're probably a year, year away from being able to fill internal. So we're um, out recruiting for those positions. Um, we've done interviewing for a part-time registry and probate a court position. Uh, at this point, have not had a, a candidate accept. Um, we did interview just a couple days ago for a deputy director in human services and um, uh, recruiting for EMS and jailer dispatcher. The ordinance enforcement specialist, uh, Chaz Ann, started on Monday. So this week she's been getting oriented and going through the various trainings to fill that position. Um, I know 
when the prior ordinance enforcement specialist started, spent a lot of time on uh, animal control issues, a lot, I mean, and did a lot of work actually to improve our process there. So um, with Chaz Ann, we're getting her trained there, but also uh, already getting her involved in public health and zoning for enforcement activities there. Um, we have interviews on Monday for the uh, Sheriff's Office, Office Administrative Assistant person. Uh, we have a resignation there. Um, I, I call it a friend, friendly resignation. They're not, you know, didn't give us two weeks. They've given us time to recruit and they'll hang on until we um, re refill that position. Same thing with the kinship care, which is a position in human services in the CPS unit. Um, we don't have a definite date, but we have some time to recruit to fill that before that person uh, moves on to another uh, employment opportunity. Um, do have uh, just the various discipline items coming through that we work with uh, department heads on. Um, and then tentatively, I can tell you that we have a date of May 6th for the arbitration with the Deputy Sheriff's Association. I'm still waiting for a couple confirmations, but that's currently the day we're planning to have that case heard. Okay, any questions, concerns on human resources? Andy, I have one question. I see that we're still recruiting for jailer dispatch for the Sheriff's Department. Has the decreased um, inmates, number of inmates, has that had any effect on our job situation in the jail? Um, not really. I mean, we really we need to decrease a lot in order to reduce the number of staff. Okay. But we have increased the number of staffs to where we don't have as much overtime and you know, out of county. Yep. Correct. Nobody out of county. All right. All right. Thank you, Andy. And we'll tell Rose, thank you for that written report. All right. Number 12, County Clerk Department report. Madam Clerk. Sure. You see the uh, counter activity there. We are still increasing on dog licenses, though the late fee kicked in on April 1st. So it slowed down a bit, but people are still coming in for licenses. We had the rabies clinic a couple of weeks ago at Winter and Hayward, and I volunteered at both of those. And we sold uh, more than 100 dog licenses there, but we had a lot of downtime. So I, I talked to the vet, the primary vet, Ed Metcalf, and we think of uh, perhaps looking at combining those into one day next year, uh, just because everybody sits around and then there's a spurt. If we combine it, put a lunch break in between to transfer to the other location, it might be a little bit less time. I'm sure he has to pay his people, although we volunteer, or I volunteer. Um, there was, continues to be turnover at the municipal clerk level. We lost the town of Spider Lake clerk right after this election. We knew it was coming, so I'm at eight now. I know that Radisson's clerk is gone, so Ms. Cheryl Gerber has had to step back into that clerk position. Um, they report a lot of stress. So I, I know elections are a big part of it. Our election on April 2nd did not go without hiccups, but we made it through. Um, I'm in the process of working with Andy a little bit and hopefully Mike and in investigating software to track records requests. Uh, we can... We've had to date 57 requests in our in overall general department in the county and 78 for the sheriffs. Uh, we covered $154.45 in fees for our total of at least 62 hours that staff has put in. But we're seeing continued increase in requests, so we're trying to see if there's a software out there. I've got one demo uh, next week with Civic Plus who runs our agenda software to see what their process is like. I know it's not going to be cheap, but Andy can confirm this, that our person that we're one of the persons we're losing in the jail spends most of her time on only records requests. So it's tremendous. And our tracking system is not good. It's not going to be accurate because we send emails to each other and try to communicate who did what. Uh, so I think that would would be a big help. The online systems have a place where people submit their request right online. And then we can send it to whoever to work on. And then their hours are in there. So it tracks the amount of time they spent and the cost. So I think it might be something that we want to bring back to a future committee. 
Um, and registration forms have been sent to the clerk statewide for our June conference, our WCCA conference that we're bringing here in Hayward. I've mentioned before that it's going to be about a $30,000 boon to our economy just for those two and a half days. But I also want to mention that um, we've had a very welcome donation from both the Alliance members and from resort owner, resort owners, Treelands. We have a, events set up on Tuesday afternoon, every conference, they figure out something to do to bring the people around the county. And for us, we're gonna have an option of either doing an ATV ride through the Sealy Hills or a pontoon ride on the Chippewa Flowage and all that's gonna be donated. Normally, Power Sports, charges $350 a machine for a day to rent and they're giving it to us. So if anybody wants to borrow a machine, there's no cost. Of course, we'll provide fuel and that type of thing. But these organizations have just really stepped up more than I've seen in a lot of the other county conferences. So kudos to them. Our locals want these people to come back. And I think the last thing I have is the new Senate districts. Of course, now we are going from two Senate and two Assembly districts down to one each. Um, we're going to be represented by 74 and 25. And that still is causing a bit of problems in our future elections for the rest of the year. Um, with people having to either decide if they're going to move to represent those communities anymore or not run. Is that correct, Stacy? I mean, it's it's causing issues. So this redistricting the, the maps that the governor redrew after the clerks did them um, are not coming without their headaches. Any questions? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that report, Lynn. Any questions for the clerk, anyone? Mr. Kinsley? The voting machines. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that can be done with them to help out at the polls? Example, sometimes the voter pulls the card out before he finishes his vote. Yeah, and unfortunately, the only thing that can be done if the machines are used is continued poll worker training. And that is so hard. I feel for any poll worker because those machines are not, you know, that easy. They have to stand there and watch. And then people think that they're spying on their vote, which is not the case, but if they need help, because we had some undervotes from people not completing their vote, <coughs> not pushing the button and it doesn't go through. So it's voter, it's, it's poll worker training. And for those folks to only have to do this process two, three or four times a year, none of us can retain that much information and, and be really, really good at it. So you bet. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Mr. Long Buckle. as we're talking about voting, an email I got from you about me getting some of Mr. Kinsley's votes, and I thank him for that. But how did that happen? <laughs> how did it happen? That that's a, that was one of our our bigger hiccups. <laughs> um, we had one municipality whose clerk leaves during the election day, goes to another job. We've asked that that not be the case but we're not successful in getting that clerk to maintain stay, staying at the polling place during the election. Okay. Therefore, poll workers are left to themselves. There's no one to ask questions for or through. And in this case, the clerk set them up for the morning, left, and the poll workers only used one card. And just as Mr. Kinsley said, in a, in it's it's the ICX machine, the touch screen machine that this this happened in. There's a card for each ballot style. So because the two of you were on separate ballots, mm -hmm. but in the same municipality, yes, there was two one card for Mr. Kinsley and one for Mr. Buckholtz, and they only used one oh. card. So Mr. Kinsley, they used your card, Mr. Buckholtz, oh. until five thirty when the clerk came back and recognized that there was a problem. So Mr. Buckholtz got his votes, but Mr. Kinsley got nothing because there was not programmed sure for that. Not. <laughs> well, I don't mean to laugh, I'm sorry. But that's the kind of mistakes oh, yeah. that can happen. Yeah. 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 I, okay. All right. Thank you, Madam Clerk. 
Okay, number 13, county administrator's report. Andy? And before I jump into that, Lynn, did you say the county clerk summer conference is coming? June 23rd through 26th. So just, I've been through one of those, hosting one with the clerk, and the clerk did a really good job of drafting the county board members to be ambassadors during the conference and help out with different activities, so. That would be a great idea. I know what I've got planned for the kickoff as far as introduction. They usually bring a county board member in to do an introduction, but I'm going to bring in Ben Pop, Sherry Beckman, and Chris Ruckdashel, and they're going to have a 15-minute PowerPoint presentation on all the things that go on in Hayward. But I like your idea, and I'm going to find a way to get right. some of you guys involved. Good deal. Thanks. Yep, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, under the county administrator's report, I'll just address A and B first. So uh, the fall or the annual WCA conference in September is coming up. They put the call out for resolutions for the business meeting. Um, we didn't, I don't think, submitted one last year, the year before we submitted one on mental health um, services and funding at the state level. This is where you can submit resolutions. They have a committee that reviews them. Um, they choose some to go to the business meeting for helping, a, helping uh, put together their legislative platform. Um, the chair uh, suggested that we look for some topics to submit resolutions for. Um, I know kind of, I think you were the, yeah, the DBA funding for transportation funding that we just heard about. Yeah. Um, so I guess this is, uh, we have to have them adopted and sent down to them by June 24th. So we have a couple months, but if you want, have any topics you would like to address, um, bring them up, let me know so we can, put a resolution together that would go through the county board. And Andy, can you or Lynn put those out to the, all the supervisors to they should brainstorm on any ideas anyone has? Yep. I'd well, like that. And we could mention it next week at the organizational meeting. Okay. Um, the other one I thought of, the only one uh, resolution we've passed recently that I think has some statewide uh, possibilities is the wakeboarding yeah. resolution. Um, and especially if you've been watching, I don't think the legislature did not take up those bills that they were talking about or I think they're going to come back, though, in different forms. But this issue is popping up all over the state now um, as far as the wakeboarding uh, rules and restrictions and that type of thing. And I think Surrey County has a reputation of kind of leading the way on the original wakeboarding uh, legislation, so might be one, another one to consider. Um, board policies, I asked to put that on there uh, only for the purpose of um, we had a – not a, it's not a huge issue, but uh, – you know, last month's meeting when people submit letters, like the clerk gets them or the chair gets them or I get them and say, I can't make the meeting, but I want, my, you know, here's my letter. Can you read it in? Um, not a huge deal unless the letter is three pages long and you go well past three minutes. We don't have anything specific in our public participation regarding the reading of letters. That might be something the board wants to tweak because I can see if it creates an equity issue if, Right. A letter lasts five minutes versus somebody speaking for three. Yeah, they shouldn't be able to be in longer than the public. So I think we should put something in the policies for that. Okay. So, yeah, if you have any suggestions on how you want to address that, because we do, our public participation doesn't speak at all to letters being – zoning is a little different just yes. because that's speaking on a specific um, – they're, 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 I'd have to go look. I'm sure it's like everything else. Um, it's all over the board. But I mean, I think alternatives are if it's three minutes is the end point. You cannot read letters and just distribute them to the board and not make them part of the verbal testimony. I think you have options there. But I, I, if you want, I can go find some ideas. The public comment can't be over three, 30 minutes long in both, right? Um, right or wrong? I believe that's the case. Hang on. Total public, total public public comment for everybody. It cannot be more than 30 minutes. But I read that somewhere. Yeah, ago. that's um, time out. According to our board policies, it's a maximum of three minutes, and all public comment will be limited to a maximum of 30 minutes, unless extended at the discretion of the chair. So I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, yeah, good. I don't think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, as far yeah. as just a general update, so like I think maybe Lynn mentioned, um, right in, we met yesterday, we're working on orientation for next week at the organizational meeting, and making sure we've got the plans together to get the board through the first meeting. Um, we will be doing a presentation, kind of a, you know, 
a little bit on board policies, a little bit about how meetings operate. Um, I'll do a little uh, summary of the committees um, while the current and new board members will be bringing back their interests. Um, just do a little bit of uh, background on, on which committees do what, um, how things like social media works and open meetings and public records. So everybody's aware of that. If there's anything specific you think should be highlighted, just let me or Lynn know, and we'll try to include that in ours. I'm not going to go into too great a detail at the first meeting on, you know, county organization and how counties work. Um, you're going to get a lot, as you know, you all know everything, but the new members will be getting a lot of information from WCA. And we're really going to highly encourage current board members and new board members to attend the county officials workshop on the 9th um, and probably get something out even yet today or tomorrow so people can hold the date. The nice thing is it's here in Hayward. It is all day, but you know, it's encouraging. It's encouraged that existing members go and new board members. So you're all here. The same information from, um, I think it starts at eight or eight 30 and it, it goes until three 30. What's that? Is that Flat Creek. Flat Creek. Yep. Mm -hmm. What about Andy mentioning something on a walking quorum? I have that in there. Okay. Yep. That's one that all of us need refreshers. Yep. You know, I'll kind of touch on that when we talk about email communication. Yeah. And what is it? I mean, um, Andy Phillips actually put out did a webinar on organizational meetings and walking quorum, so I'm pulling some of that information from him as well. Okay. Uh, May 16th, I think we've already talked about, is the ribbon cutting and uh, short, I say a short ceremony here just to dedicate this new building. Um, other items that have come up, um, yeah, just back to the personnel and recruiting, um, we've made some, we have made some progress in the Sheriff's Department with those positions and filling out dispatch and jail. So I think things are much improved there. Um, there's a lot going on in the Criminal Justice Collaborating Council and maybe not as much at the meetings, but we have both diversion and recovery court up and running. Um, the deflection grant with law enforcement is in full swing. The fentanyl campaign is transitioning away from the awareness into more treatment and uh, peer recovery and things like that. Um, there was a, uh, I guess, a public forum out at the casino Tuesday night. Yep. I think they had really good attendance on, and that was part of part of the awareness, but also looking at what options there are for um, individuals seeking recovery and resources for families and things like that. So I think there's good traction being gained there. Um, spending some time on uh, meeting with GenCom next week on the radio network. I think I've mentioned this, that you know we switch providers for the public safety radios. They've done an initial assessment and um, you know they're suggesting, you know, in a perfect world, they would recommend different hardware, different network, different tower sites. So we're taking a look at that, trying to figure out how to um, how to tackle that. Uh, it's to do a complete rebuild would be you know, fairly expensive, um, but also talking to some other counties that are also nearby that have similar radios or looking at their radio systems as well to see if we can create some efficiencies by sharing some costs or doing, um, you know, even if we had similar networks that uh, one provider can provide the service on, uh, that'd be good. Uh, I mentioned the last the finance meeting that we'll be starting budget in uh, probably May uh, with capital projects list and then going into the full-blown budget process in June and July. Um, I think that's kind Any of Any update on the ATV? ATV, I yeah. think we've tried to, I don't know, be transparent as possible and put the word out early because we know it's coming, that with the change in the ordinance, um, we still have a process to follow, but the ATV Alliance uh, contacted Mr. Kinsley and Mr. Pino. And I, and so we did have a, just a discussion that they do intend to come into the main meeting of public works. They actually say they'll communicate with the commissioner first, but they're intending to open all the, ask to open all the county roads that are not opened currently to ATV traffic. So they have uh, sent a request to all the towns uh, asking for their uh, approval, or at least a recommendation on approving or potentially not approving the opening of those routes. They've also communicated with LCO to get approval for those county roads within the reservation. So they expect to get that information back and present the request to the commissioner to review and then present it to the public works committee in May. 
which is the, per the ordinance, is the meeting where all the current routes are reviewed and as well as new route considerations are, could occur. The commissioner gave a uh, presentation or uh, to the Public Works Committee last night. He's already done some work at looking at all the different um, routes that are not currently opened um, and then you know, providing information for the committee on what the daily traffic count is, any safety issues currently. There's uh, some crash reporting or data from the public maps um, strictly for automobiles as to how many uh, accidents there have been, how many fatalities, how many property damage. He's gone through the list with the law enforcement um, and they've indicated they have no concerns with any of the routes that are going to be are anticipated to be proposed. So that's where we're going. Um, should make for a interesting May public appreciate work meeting. It. Yep, appreciate it. Um, tourist rooming house, I think that's the other one that's coming on, on its heels, kind of similar. The ad hoc committee there has uh, reviewed the draft ordinance and forwarded back out now to the committees where it the request for the ad hoc committee originally came from, which are zoning and health and human services. It did come out of the ad hoc committee as a health and human services ordinance, um, which would essentially mean there would be a county permit issued for tourist rooming houses. Um, right now we issue a state, we're, we're an agent of the state for, for the health um, licensing. So right now we issue a state permit. This ordinance would add some additional criteria for the county permit um, related to occupancy and some other notifications and um, so that will tracking now to have a public hearing for that sometime in May. After, we're gonna set it after the Human Services Board meeting next month, um, but then you probably would see that come to the board over the summer. It's gotta go, we're gonna do a public hearing, uh, go back to committee, they can make any changes, alterations based on the public comment, and then I expect it will be forwarded to the board at that time. I think you can imagine that we've, even through the ad hoc process heard from people um, who want to see more um, <laughs> management of the tourist swimming houses. And then we've also heard from the tourist swimming house industry um, and their, you know, things in the ordinance they're not happy with. So it's been input from both sides, but I anticipate we'll see spirited uh, conversation with that issue as well. Um, and then airport, it's probably in the other uh, room filler. Um, the next master plan meeting, the public meeting, won't be until the September, October timeframe. And then I don't, like I've said, I don't, they'll take back that public comment and you'll probably see that master plan come to the board after the first of the year. Okay. Thank you, Andy. Anything else for Andy? Yes. I have a question on that um, training for the board members. That's not open to the public, right? It's just board members only. I believe so. Okay, I just wanted to clarify. I honestly don't hold me to that though. It's hosted by WCA and the um, extension. Um, if you already know you want to go to the training though, let Lynn know because we'll register everybody. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. Mr. Kinsel. Yes. Um, two questions. To refresh my memory, I think on the 16th we have to, the board has to review and accept our, uh, I can't think of the exact name of it, our rules that we have to follow, that Sawyer County's rules that we set up, that we go back and look at periodically. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have that on the agenda. That's why I'm mentioning it. Okay. And then- So uh, is that, is that the, the board policies? Yes. Get reviewed? Okay. Because we're, we're putting out a copy of those as part of the information you're getting, so everybody gets a copy of where we're at with those. And then- I'm allowing that might be something you want to hit on under the training is some of the rules that are in that. Yes, yeah. th that is part of the training. Okay. We've highlighted okay. some of those. Just trying to help out. Thank you. So right. everybody's going to get a hard, get, hard copy of the board policies? Okay. I would like one. I have one, but I don't know how old it is. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Andy. Future agenda items. Lynn, you got, uh, yeah, senior update, good. And then the VA update on transportation. And then we could have a whole different looking admin board and committee. 
Yeah. So we'll see. But all right, correspondence, reports, conferences, meetings, anyone? If not, we're adjourned. Thank you everyone for your time. Yes.